This video is for my Algebra 1 class. It's over Lesson 35, Locating and Using Intercepts. So ladies and gentlemen, there are two different kinds of intercepts. We have an x-intercept and a y-intercept. The x-intercept is the point, and I want to emphasize this, it is the point where a graph intersects the x-axis, hence x-intercept. It intersects the x-axis. So therefore, the y-intercept would be the point where the graph intersects the y-axis. So if you think about all the points on the x-axis, the one thing that they all have in common is that they have some x-value followed by zero for the y-value. So an x-intercept is always going to be written like this. So word of caution, if you're working on, on the homework and you're told to identify the x-intercept, remember the x-intercept is a point, so you're going to take whatever that x-value is and write it in the point, comma, zero. Likewise, then the y-intercept, well, if it's on the y-axis, the one thing that everything has on the y-axis in common is that the x-value is zero, and then it's followed by some y-value. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to take a look at uh, graphing here, particularly. So, I'm going to draw a solid line across my page. And before we, we really, really dive into uh, using the intercepts, I want to just talk about graphing in general. And so, for example, we're going to use the equation 2x equals 3y plus 1. Now, I can tell you right now that this is a line. Um, just because we have a, a y with no exponent, we have an x with no exponent. Uh, so an x and a y with no exponents is going to make a line every time. So uh, I know the shape of my graph, so it's just a matter of getting points on the graph. So if I make a table of values here, an x and y column, and let's just find a few. So ladies and gentlemen, the relationship between an equation and its graph is that any pair of values that makes the equation true will be a pair of values that we graph on our coordinate plane. So if I look at this here, uh, one, one value that might stand out to me is uh, if I choose 2 for x, so 2 times 2 is 4, then over here 3 times 1 plus 1 would also be 4. So 2 comma 1 is a solution here. When x is 2 and y is 1, uh, so looking at some other things, uh, noticing that we're going to do 2 times x, if we're looking for a whole number or at least integer solutions, uh, we could consider here, uh, well, what if uh, what if I uh, consider this to be even then, because 2 times an integer would be an even. So over here I'm looking for 3 times something plus 1 to be an even number. Um, so maybe, maybe I choose 3 for y. So I could choose my, my y value instead. Uh, so if I choose um, 3 for y, then 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So 2 times 5 would be 10. 2 times 5 would be 10. So 5 comma 3 is a solution there. So you don't have to start with your x value. You could um, start with your y value instead of the x value. All right, uh, looking for some other values, um, I might consider, okay, well, let's say if I choose 5, uh, 3 times 5 then would be 15 plus 1 is 16, so then it would be 2 times 8 would be 16, and then um, let's say, um, well, noticing that these are all odds, what if we get 1 in the negatives, an odd in the negatives, see how that turns out. So 3 times negative 1 would be a negative 3 plus 1 would be a negative 2. Well, 2 times negative 1 is also negative 2. And so we just find a bunch of values. So if I graph these out, and what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to make a graph. Um, I'm going to go 5 in every direction, I think. Uh, and I'm going to count by 2s so that I can get that 8 in there without making this graph huge. So I'm going to come down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And then I like to make that little mark in the middle because then I know exactly where my y-axis should go without having to recount it. 
And then since we are counting by something other than one, we should be labeling oops, labeling our grid here, labeling our tick marks. So, um, and you don't necessarily have to label everything. Um, so I, I'm just going to label a, a few here. So two, four, and then negative two, negative four, two, four, negative two, negative four. That's good enough. So let's go ahead and graph what we have now. So we have two comma one. So two comma one would be right there. Five would be two, four, five, and then three, two, and then halfway would be three. Eight would be two, four, six, eight, and then I got a positive five. So two, four, and halfway would be five. These are fitting on a nice line here. Uh, and then we have negative 1 comma negative 1. So negative 1 comma negative 1 uh, would be halfway to the left, halfway down. So right in the middle there. And so if I put a line through here, there it is. And, and you can see here my x-intercepts, uh, they're pretty close to the origin. Uh, with human error, it's it can be a little hard to tell if it exactly is the uh, the origin. Uh, or if not, um, so we, we would need to do our algebra to confirm that, but it, it's pretty close there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of an awkward way to graph this. You, you can do it, it works, but instead, what's more typical is if we take our equation and we manipulate it. So I'm going to take my equation here, my 2x equals 3y plus 1, and one of the things that uh, we want, might want to do with this is to uh, solve for y. So if I solve this for y, I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides. And so I'll get a 2x minus 1 equals 3y. So remember, those are not like terms, so they're not going to combine. And then from there, uh, divide both sides by 3. And since we'll be left with just y here, I'm going to do a little symmetric property and throw the y there on the left. And then if I go ahead and distribute this divide by 3 here, I'm going to get a 2 thirds x minus 1 third. And now what we could do is we could start plugging in values for x, and it would just be a matter of following these operations to get my, my y values. So we might want to consider, again, if we're looking for integer solutions, uh, since we're going to take 2 thirds times x, uh, I would want to probably look for things that when I multiply 2 times x, it gives me something that when I subtract 1 would be divisible by 3. So like 16, because then 16, 2 times 8, 16, minus 1 would give me 15. And then 15 thirds is 5. Um, so it can be a little tricky there, but you know, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, what we just discovered here is what hopefully you remember from last year, a little thing called slope intercept form. When we take a line and we solve for y, we get slope intercept form. And it is of the formula y equals mx plus b. And so remember here that our goal is to solve for y. If you solve for y, you get your slope-intercept form. And so in slope-intercept form, m, the coefficient, is the slope, so I can see my slope here is two thirds, and then b it says plus b, so we got to think of this as addition. B would be my intercept, specifically my y-intercept, or more appropriately, the y-value of my y-intercept. So over here, since we have a minus one third, we're going to think of that as plus a negative one third. So what we see here then is this tells me that the y-intercept Oops, I got the C there. There we go. The y-intercept 
So y intercept is going to be 0 for the y value, or excuse me, the x value. And then it'll be a negative 1 third for the x value. So having it in slope intercept form can be helpful because then we get the y value of the y intercept. That's my b. Well, Asia, and another thing that we could do here to help us is we could have taken our equation we could have subtracted 3y from both sides. And so we've gotten 2x minus 3y equals 1 and that would have been the only thing I would have needed to do to this to find what's called standard form. Oops. And standard form has the formula ax plus by equals c. So it is something times x plus something times y equals some constant. Now, standard form is particularly useful when it comes to trying to find intercepts. So uh, if I take a table of values now, x and y, we know that for the x-intercept, y will be 0. We know that for the y-intercept, x will be 0. <clears throat> so if y is 0, 3 times 0 would be 0, that will basically disappear. And so what we end up with is 2x equals 1. Well, 2x equals 1, we know if 2x equals 1, divide both sides by 2, x must be 1 half. On the other hand, if x is 0, then 2x would be 2 times 0. So basically that would disappear, leaving me with a negative 3y equals 0. Well, if we divide both sides by negative 3, we can see then it must be a negative 1 third. And so we actually have both of our intercepts by using the standard form. Now a quick note about standard form. In order for this to be true standard form, a, B, and C have to be real numbers. And actually, I shouldn't have put a period there. Let's erase that period. And oops, goodness, I'm so so sorry here, guys. Uh, and A and B are not zero. So A, B, and C are real numbers and A and B are not zero. So essentially if A was zero or B was zero, then the X term or the Y term would disappear. So we need to still have an X term and a Y term. That's why A and B cannot be zero. But in that, A, B, and C just have to be real numbers. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, what we have here are our two intercepts. Well, those are two points. That's technically all we need to graph something. So what I'm going to do is I'd like you to make a graph for me. Let's see. Um, we're going to kind of, kind of run out of space here. Maybe you are too. Um, but let's just make it uh, three in every direction. So I'm going to come down three. I'm going to go one, two, three. One, two, three. That's going to be good enough. And then up here, one, two, three. Down here, one, two, three. And I, instead of counting by ones, since I have fractions here, I'm actually going to count by thirds. So this will be one third, two thirds, three thirds, or one. So this will be negative one third, negative two thirds, so this will be a negative one. One third, two thirds, one. Negative one thirds, negative two thirds, negative one. So if I plot these two points now, these two intercepts, one half, so, well, if we go three spaces to get to one, half of that would be right there, comma zero. That's my x-intercept. So one half comma zero is my x-intercept. Zero comma negative one-third would be right here. And then if we connect those two dots, we've re-graphed this line. The only difference between this graph, though, and this graph 
is that we've zoomed in more here on the origin so we can see did you know it looked up here like it might have gone through the origin does it actually go through the origin no it doesn't and let's flip to the back here and we're going to take a look at another example so specifically using the intercepts so let's say you were given an equation y equals 3 fourths x minus 6. Now normally that, that would be very nice right there. Um, we could just go ahead and, and graph that slope intercept form. You know the y value of your y intercept. You know the slope is 3 over 4 so rise over run. We're going to go up 3 and right 4 to find more points or reverse both of those down 3 left 4. Um, but Today, to practice finding our intercepts, I want to manipulate this equation into standard form. So in order to be standard form, the x term and the y term, not only both have to be here, but they have to be on the same side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract my 3 fourths x on both sides. Now to fit the formula, we usually have the x term first. So I'm going to have a negative 3 fourths x and then that was a positive y, so plus y, and then that'll equal a negative 6. Now that right there is technically standard form. However, it's not typically how we write standard form. Um, well, a, b, and c only have to be real numbers, uh, we do typically try to change them into integers if we can. So we can make this a little bit clearer, a little bit more useful uh, if we just go through and we take our negative 3 fourths x plus y equals uh, a negative 6 and we multiply both sides well let's get rid of that denominator let's multiply both sides by 4 but maybe it might even be helpful though because this equals a negative if we just multiply it by a negative 4 so if my negative 4 distributes in the negative will cancel the negative the 4 will cancel the 4 and so this will just become a 3x a negative 4 times y will be a negative 4y. And then negative 6 times negative 4 is a positive 24. Now, while both this and this, so both of these, are standard form, this one's a little bit more helpful for finding my intercepts. So if I make my table of values here, if y is 0, I'll get the x-intercept. If x is 0, I'll get the y-intercept. So if I put 0 in for y, my negative 4y will disappear. So 3x equals 24. So 3 times what is 24? 8. So 8 comma 0 is 1 point. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if I plug 0 in for x, 3 times 0 is 0, that'll disappear. So negative 4y equals 24. I'll divide both sides by negative 4. y must be negative 6. Those are my two intercepts. So 8 comma 0 is the x-intercept, 0 comma negative 6 is the y-intercept. So over here, um, since we're going 8, let's go 5 in every direction. We'll count by 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's where my y-axis is going to go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then finally, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Since I'm going to count by twos, I'm going to label at least a little bit of my axis. Really just two in every direction is good enough. And now graph your two intercepts. So 8 comma 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 comma 0, and then 0 comma negative 6. So negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. And then if we connect the dots, with a line, we've just graphed using the intercept. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of this lesson.